It doesn't get any more Knoxville than our next guest <laughs> when you talk about hitting close to home. Holly, welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. Well, Holly, let's, let's start with the golf tournament, the annual event, and your participation in it. Obviously, a lot of us with Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October, a lot of us have, have been hit close to home with, uh, with breast cancer with someone, a loved one, someone Absolutely. we know. Absolutely. Well, about today we're, we're starting a new concept. We're, we're, we're combining golf with swimming so <laughs> it's so much rain it's, come on are you kidding me no it's uh it's a it's a uh, obviously event close to um uh my heart uh, and our foundation's been ar- built around um our relationship or having to deal with breast cancer and so um our awareness and our um ability to raise money for for research is what what we're trying to do and what it's all about and and people were very gracious to sign up and then very gracious to come out and continue playing in, in the rain. And I, I know they're having a great time, and we've got another group coming in. But, um, yeah, it's just it's our first time we've had the golf tournament. We usually associate the breast cancer deal with our motorcycle ride, but thought that it would be really cool to add a golf tournament. And uh, I, I, the reception has been great. Just in spite of the weather, it's been really, really good. Yeah. Has this been a good break for you, uh, Holly? I mean, you've been so dialed in with this Lady Vols basketball team working hard. Or, or are you going to be out there still wondering about your rotations when you're on yeah, the second team? Exa- you know, I'm, I'm not even playing. You, they don't even want me to play. I would, <laughs> kill, I would ruin this golf course. Um, it is. It's, it's, it's a, right now, we're, we've just gotten through with being on the road recruiting. just been crazy. And um, we were about. I was out every day. I think for about three days, and all of our assistants were. We've been beating the bushes, and then we started practice yesterday. So it it is kind of different. It's hard to to refocus, but uh, I chose to have this time just because this is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we just we just thought it would be a, a great opportunity for us. And it is a good little break for me. Actually, I, can do, I did. I just went back and did our practice schedule. I uh, did all that planning, and then I came back here. So it's all good. Now, th- and, and a good time for you to be out of town, I might add, with some of the madness that's been going on in <laughs> exactly. Knoxville. Now, it doesn't get any crazier for you, so I wouldn't ask you this question unless I knew you could handle it. <laughs> How are you handling it on the recruiting trail? Because obviously the Lady Val brand is a – for for decades, it, you know, when the Lady Vals come to your house, and I'm sure it's still like that, but yeah. now I'm sure other coaches are probably Absolutely. taking advantage of this situation. How have you handled you know, some of maybe the misconception or the misperceptions out there? Well, we, we talk a lot about, um, uh, first of all, we, we don't shy away from it. We, we understand that Pat has an illness, and, and we're all dealing with it. And, and, and I'm, I am here and will continue to always be protect and, and uh, Pat Summit, and that's how it's always going to be. Um, we come out and say we, we built this program, obviously Pat did, but she built it with a strong foundation. Mm-hmm. And so we're selling our foundation. I've been a part of this. Um, Kyra's been here. Jolette's been involved from an outside, but she has such great experience. Dean Lockwood was is here and has won a couple championships as well. So different leadership, different players, but we're still Tennessee. We're still we're still what Pat has always wanted to be, and that's um, strong academically, strong on the court. And, and I will tell you this, in, in the recruiting, the, probably the biggest challenge we had was before they named, uh, when it came out before they named right. the head coach and, and, and the uncertainty of was Pat going to be here or not. That was probably the, uh, the biggest thing we had to overcome was just the uncertainty. And now that it, when it went forward, and um, obviously uh, Pat's going to continue to be a part of our program, um, it's been nothing but positive. So it, it hasn't been a, it hasn't been a hard sell because, as I said, Tennessee is Tennessee, and we have the great tradition and the, the alumni and um, our belief that uh, uh, once you're a lady ball, always a lady ball, and, and when you get here, you're you're going to continue to make great things happen. Somewhat business as usual, then. Absolutely. Now, now as far as conducting practices, and I know that when you transition to a new team from a veteran team. There's going to be some changes in practice. Pat would have changed sure. how she did practice. Is there any little wrinkle that, that you've added that, that maybe you lost in the coaches' meeting with, with Pat that you always wanted to try, <laughs> and she said, no, Holly, we're not doing that? Well, I probably would have said that about um, uh, three or four years ago, but Pat's been very gracious to let me come in and, and have been planning practices for the last four years and, and, and kind of what – what we want together and, and Pat and I's philosophy is it's, it's so interesting or 
we have so much similarities because mm-hmm. we've been around each other so long. <laughs> right, right. And uh, I think probably for me, the the tempo of practice um, is is really what I'm focusing on and getting from drill to drill. And I think you're going to see us have a lot more up tempo uh, play, which we haven't not due to Pat, which we haven't had just because. I think of our, our team, we're more athletic this year, right. a lot of athleticism, and we're going to take advantage of that. And, if you know, as coaches, I think you're as good as your, as your players. When you have great players, you're going to be a great coach because of the, the quality of people that you have. And um, I think our players this year, especially the young ones, we're very, very athletic, great quality. I'm, I was so pleased yesterday with our practice. Um, I wouldn't want to throw it up tomorrow. But just the energy that we've had, uh, the effort. And in the past, we've had to coach energy, get the effort up. And, right. and this group doesn't appear that, that we have to do that. So we they can got actually a little coach. Bit, they, and they've got a little bit more of a, a chip on their shoulder. Now, I, I wouldn't want to say anything, you know, like horrible about the class that just left. But oh, absolutely. It, but at the same time, you know, they came in riding the, you know, and it, it just happens. You come in riding the coattails of a, of a great program, and you think, well, now that I'm here, I'm going to be great, too. When in fact every right. team is kind of its own, and this this truly looks like a, a, a new beginning of sorts it for is. Lady Vols basketball. And, and you don't want to downplay what that group. I mean, they they won four not, four um, um, SEC championships. Yeah, I know. Isn't that other. funny? So We're like, oh yeah. You're like, but we've kind of our standard is well, ridiculous. You've, you've, you've you haven't had a good year if you haven't been to the Final Four or haven't gone uh, uh, or won a national championship. Right. So. But it is a little bit of a different feel, and um, um, the MO on the group that just left is, you know, sometimes we had to pull teeth to get them to play hard. Very talented, extremely talented. Number one recruiting class in the country four years ago. But they didn't at times gel and play together. And and, um, I think this group um, was a highly touted uh, recruiting class, and their their energy level is, is, is so high that um, they understand what tempo we want to play. And that's such a difference. I didn't coach a lot of effort yesterday. I actually could teach and coach. And uh, we're holding them accountable. And, and uh, for the most part, I mean, I, we, we've, we've practiced one full day with the whole team. Um, was very pleased. Wow. Joined by Lady Vols head coach Holly Warlick here on the New Sentinel Sports page. Talk about the changes to the staff and how those responsibilities will be divided with this new group. Well, I thought it was important. Uh, Dean stayed, and, and that gave us some consistency, and he's done a heck of a job with with recruiting and um, and help coach these young ladies. And so for him staying was huge for me. That was a great comfort level. And then I needed to go out, and, and our recruiting, I thought, was, has suffered because of we were a, a, a person down, so we didn't get out probably as much as we wanted to last year. And uh, I, I thought the best recruiter in the country, in my opinion, has always been. Always said if I was a, became a head coach, the first person I would go try to get was Kyra Elsie. Great relationship with her, and uh, she's a great recruiter. And she's a former lady boss, so she gets it. She understands um, the pressures here, what is expected here. And so that was my first task was to get Kyra away from Kentucky. And um, just she's, done, she's doing an unbelievable job keeping us organized and keeping us staying on task. And then Jolette Law um, came from, from Illinois, was a head coach, got let go, but had spent 12 years with Vivian Stringer, great recruiter, helped build Vivian's program, and great coach on the floor. So I, I just thought it was so important to get two great recruiters and two people I thought were were very good teachers, very good on the court. So I am love being around them. We, we have a great time, but we know what direction we need to go, and we know how hard to, uh, we need to work. And we have all, all four of us have been just beating the bushes down this last three three weeks and, and haven't haven't complained about it. Haven't, we, we know what we need to do, and we, we're, we're getting out there and getting the job done. For our listeners, just a, a quick summary capsule of each of your new players and kind of what they bring to the table. Absolutely. Uh, Andrea Carter is a, a backup point guard. She's coming off an ACL injury. Uh, she's coming out of Georgia, very athletic, great leaping ability, um, a good defender, just a solid kid who knows the game. Uh, and I think she's going to She's going to continue to get uh, better and better as, as we go. Um, Bashar Graves out of Clarksville, Tennessee, probably 
I think just has an unbelievably upside to her. Her body is is already a college type body, a very physical, great 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 offensive player, great rebounder. We haven't had somebody that really commits to the to the rebounding. Her, her rebounding ability is off the chain, and I'm gonna. I think you'll see her get a lot of a lot of minutes as well. Uh, Nia Moore inside. She was a late pickup for us. She kind of has an Izzy Harrison body. Her, her probably she's probably a little behind maybe offensively, but her her defensive presence, great shot blocker, good body control, needs to get in the weight room a little bit. But um, I see I see great things um, uh, for Nia as well. Jasmine Phillips is a junior college kid we signed. Um, Probably her strength is her athletic ability, and she's going to be a, a defensive stop, stopper for us. I think probably the Jasmine Jones. We have three Jasmines, so this is the third. We have a manager, Jasmine, and we have another. So we we got to give them initials. So hers is hers is JJ, and Jasmine Fields is JP. So JJ is uh, uh, from Alabama. Smooth, smooth jump shot uh, shooter, and is going to be an incredible force for us. Uh, on the defensive end, she is athletic. I, I just see her upside is just is crazy. It's crazy. So uh, I keep I keep hearing myself say these these five new ones coming in athletic, athletic because they are. They're just their bodies are. Um, they've got great bodies. I mean, Nia's Nia's got to get her body a little bit more strong. But God, they're just their their physical their physical presence is uh, it makes a statement and. Um, they're, they're just they're up and down the floor, and um, they're the type of kids that want to get down and play defense, and those are sometimes hard to come by. Yeah. You know, Vince, talking to Holly today, you know, something that just really struck me, when you think of a new coach coming in, I mean, I'm trying to imagine what our interviews were like with Conzo when he was coming in. He couldn't go down the roster like this. I mean, essentially, <laughs> you, you yeah. served, you know, as a kind of sort of a co-head coach last year. We saw you in action, and this is, this is nothing new for you. And uh, just what a huge advantage that has to be that you're not going to another program and starting over. And, and how obviously you've had a lot right. of opportunities over the years. You know, I've got to think, um, you know, this is this has got to be very exciting for you to have the opportunity to continue Pat's legend in I'm this ab- manner. I'm absolutely thrilled. Everybody goes, oh, are you, you know, are you, cr- you're crazy. And I said, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I've always known this. This is what I've known. I just, this is what I've, I do. And uh, it, it's an honor for me to follow Pat. I'm not. I'm not scared of it. I'm not worried about it. Well, an outsider would be absolutely. But absolutely. someone that loves Pat and knows Pat can uh, can embrace I this. Totally agree. And, and I think probably even even if I just had this, had the circumstance and had it happened last year, I, I'd be a little. I would be a little nervous. But last year was a great um uh opportunity for me to to understand it get in that position to build and and that was a tremendous learning experience for me uh and, and so i think that helped me prepare so much better for this year um having that opportunity to get up and and, and do the things that you know as assistant you can see everything you could see what you need to see because that's what you're in, in tune to see as a head coach you got to see everything so it is it is different um, and so you've you got to have, I think, great assistance behind you. So from that, that standpoint, it was huge for me. It was a huge um, opportunity for me as learning and growing and getting, getting in that position. Absolutely. Is there anyone coming back that maybe in, in the off season maybe has changed their game, improved their game, improved their body? We might lo- see different things from this year. That's a great question. And I think if I had to point out a, a couple people, first would be Sierra Burdick. Worked on her her game religiously. Just um, has worked on her footwork. Has worked on her shoot. I mean, she was a great sh- scorer, but has worked on the defensive end. Not too many kids in the summer go work on their defense, and Sierra did that. So I think you'll see a change in 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 her her body in in her game. I thought Aria Massengale has has um, had dropped some weight. I thought uh, she's gotten a lot leaner. She made, has made her a lot quicker. So I think those two probably stand out the most. And, and then you see Izzy Harrison, who has is, who is, uh, got a little bit muscle inside. But now it's, it's her opportunity. She played behind Glory and, and um, uh, Vicky Ball and all those kids inside. And now it's her opportunity. And, and I think that has been that learning experience from her last year 
And as your freshman, you want to play. You just, right. Oh, yeah. You know, you're upset. I didn't get in the game. Well, you're not ready. Is you're not ready. <laughs> and now this year, I said, would you get ready? Because you and I are going to have this conversation next year, and you're going to be wanting me to take you out, and I'm going to totally ignore you. <laughs> so uh, I, I think from that standpoint that she's gotten ready for, for – um, being in that role, she's be- she's become a really good leader for our post people uh, in practice. So I think probably probably those three, if I had to to pick um, somebody who's really changed the game. And Me- Megan's been steady. Um, Kamiko Williams is a guy to get. You know, she- she's just she got she's, she's a senior. It's time for her to break out. Mm-hmm. It's just time for her to break out. And um, I- I'm waiting on it. I want her to. I want her to have the opportunity to. But she's she's just got to her practice. Uh, her practice and intensity has got to get better, but gosh, she has the tools. Does everybody fit that get up and down the floor uh, approach that you're going to have? You think they do, they do, and uh, I, you know, at, at times you would think Tabor Spaney may struggle with that, but Tabor's getting her her defense is, she, you know, I, I gave her honestly, I fo- wanted Tabor to focus on just getting well in the off season, and that's hard for Tabor Spaney when she's such a workaholic, and. Tabor did get well, and she got better. So I think, I think from that standpoint, her defense is better. But Tabor can get up and down the floor. Mm-hmm. So I, I look at our, I look at our um, roster, and when we practice, and we don't, we there's no nothing in our mentality where we're going to wait on somebody to get down the floor. No, we all we all need to get down the floor. Holly, I got to ask you in today's new Sentinel Sports section. Are you going to be playing the Foxtrot defense? Because I don't know what defensive <laughs> like, drill you're working like on here. Dancing with what the is stars. Uh, this is you working on a defensive drill. It is. This I, is going to be the new Foxtrot defense. That, uh, it's a hand check, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we're, Ch- Tabor's <laughs> teaching me the tango or something. I don't know. Dancing with the stars. I, that is funny. I've not seen this. But, yeah, we're picking up the tempo. I guess I'm telling I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Tabor's teaching me how to dance. I need, it's going to take more than Tabor to maybe, teach me maybe how to dance. It's, maybe it's an omen. And maybe the Lady Vols will be dancing in the Final Four this year. Footwork, however you get to exactly. it. Exactly. Champions for a cause. It's the Swing for Pink Golf Tournament here at Iguani Farms. Holly Warlick, a big part of it. You can donate and get more information. Championsforacause.org with proceeds, a majority of them benefiting breast cancer uh, research and treatment. Holly, great to yep. visit with you. Really Thank appreciate you all. it. Thanks for having me. All right. That is Holly Thank Warlick. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate Lady, it. Lady Vols head coach here on the new Sentinel Sports page.